Hi guys and welcome to this training session where we're going to explore the different ways of balancing a heating system when using Drayton's range of TRVs. So we begin by looking at the principle of balancing and why we do it. So the purpose of balancing a radiator system is to ensure that all of the radiators on the circuit are able to get hot. Now what you find is that radiators that are closest to the boiler and pump tend to get hotter faster and tend to rob heat from other radiators, particularly ones that are further away, because the water will take the path of least resistance, and that is through the closest radiators. So by balancing, what we're actually doing is trying to increase the resistance to flow on the closest radiators so that the water will be driven to the furthest radiators, thereby all of the radiators will have a similar drop across the flow and return. So we'll begin by looking at how we balance using the traditional method with the lock shield. So here I have the RT212, which has got the fixed flow rate body. And on the other end, I've got our standard angled lock shield with the adjusting cap fitted. And just to have a closer look at this RT212 body, you can see that both ports are wide open. There's no restrictions in there. Therefore, there's no resistance. We're not able to increase the resistance into the radiator via the valve body, that means our balancing is done purely on the lock shield. So to get this radiator balanced, we're going to be using the delta T method, which is looking at the differential temperature between the flow and the return. There's a couple of ways we can measure this. You can get these clip-on dials that tell you what temperature the flow is, and you'd have another one on the return. But a far easier way to keep track of what's going on is to use one of these differential thermometers, where you've got two clamps, one for the flow, one for the return, and the digital readout will show you the respective temperatures of both. So I'll get these clamped onto the radiator tails of both the flow and the return. And the system is off at the moment. So when we look at the readout from the thermometer, we can see that both T1 and T2 are the same. Now, before we balance, we need to make sure that anything that might restrict flow into the radiator, other than the lock shield that we're going to manipulate, needs to be removed. So off with the sensing head so we know that we've got a wide open TRV body and we'll also make sure that the lock shield is also wide open. So I've now just made a call for heat on the central heating system and the boiler's kicked in and we will see now what the effect is of having an unbalanced radiator, so one where there's no TRV on it and the lock shield is wide open and also it's the first radiator in the run. So Theoretically, this one is going to have the path of least resistance. So what I would expect to see is before very long, the flow temperature will equal the return temperature. So this radiator will essentially be just robbing all the heat. And because it's the path of least resistance, radiators downstream, which have more resistance, will not be able to get enough water throughput and will not work within their optimum range. OK, so the boiler's been running for a couple of minutes and you can see now that we're up to T1 is up around 67 degrees. Boiler stat is actually set at 65, so that's pretty accurate going in on the flow. But you can see now that the radiator is now hot, but our flow and return temperatures are almost equal. And if I take a measurement of the return pipe close to the boiler, that's also getting up around the 63, 64 degree mark, which obviously means that the boiler is no longer in condensing mode despite the rest of the radiators on the system not being up to temperature. So this radiator really needs to have its resistance increased so that the water is encouraged to move throughout the system. And we do that by throttling down on the lock shield valve. We can then repeat the test. So what we're looking for here is a T1 of around about 65 degrees, but T2, according to the boiler manual, should we should be seeing around about a 12 degree drop across the radiator. So for a flow temperature T1 of around about 65 degrees, we would expect T2 to be close to 53 degrees to be anywhere near balanced, which is more or less what we've achieved here. So that's the adjustments made to this radiator. Now, the most important thing is that we lock that setting in and we do that by removing the adjusting cap and replacing it with the locking cap. So remove the center screw, the adjusting cap comes off. You can see that the locking cap doesn't turn because the molding fits into one of the flats on the hex on the top of the lock shield and then replace the center screw so that the cap doesn't fall off. Now, 
On the other side, we can now install our sensing head. So as always, up to maximum, pop it on. Now the RT212 again has got six positions because you've got a hex nut on the top of the valve body. So pick the position that's most suitable, finger tight on the locking ring, and then set the required comfort setting. So that's the traditional method of balancing a heating system using the lock shield valve. And you're going to be required to do this if you install fixed flow rate bodies, such as those that are supplied with our RT212. Now, if you install the RT414 or the TRV4, then these are supplied with our EB body. And using the pre-setting key, you're able to balance on the TRV. And I'll now show you the advantages of doing that. So here I have the TRV4 Classic that I installed on the last session. Um, we need to go through and again balance this radiator, but this time we'll use the presetting key on the EB valve body. Remember, the bodies that come with the RT414 and the TRV4 are the variable flow rate, so you can use the presetting key to set the balance. Now, the first thing we need to do here, like before, is remove the head so that we've got no restrictions into the radiator. But this time we can set the lock shield to wide open and immediately install the locking cap because we don't want to be making any adjustments on the lock shield, nor do we want the customer to make any subsequent changes. So we can lock this one wide open. Like before, we can set the differential thermometer up, T1 on the flow, T2 on the return, and we can then call for heat and see what the delta T across the radiator is. Again, the same system as before, so we're looking at around about a 12 degree drop across this radiator. And given that this radiator is about five away from the boiler, I would expect the setting to be around about three or four, but I will also be expecting to see a slight drop in the flow temperature compared to the first radiator we did. And with a few minutes running, you can see that already the flow is up to temperature and the return is very similar. So this radiator really does need to be throttled, need to have some resistance added, to benefit the rest of the system. So to increase the resistance and therefore achieve some balance on the valve body, we start by loosening the clamp ring with the presetting tool and then by flipping the tool over we are able to turn the valve insert in a clockwise direction and you can see I've highlighted the numbers on the top. Now these refer to the numbers that are stamped onto the top of the insert and correspond to the size of aperture. So Position 6 is wide open, you turn it clockwise, position 1 that then becomes the smallest, and then 2, 3, 4 and 5 progressively get larger and larger until you're back to 6. So once you've made the setting, you then flip the key over and you do up the clamp ring. It's important that you only turn in a clockwise direction because that means that if you do pick up the clamp ring whilst you're turning the valve insert, you're only ever going to tighten the clamp ring, not loosen it. If you loosen the clamp ring until to the point where it comes all the way out, then there's a danger that the valve insert itself could be ejected by the pressure of the water in the system. So the benefit of balancing a radiator in this fashion is that the fact that the balance is locked in to the valve body. So should you want to remove this radiator for decorating, the standard process is to take the sensing head off and to replace that with a, with the decorator cap. Remember, that's why you don't throw away the decorator cap. They're not just to protect the threads. They are also to shut the radiator off or shut that leg of the radiator off. So you throttle that down. Now, in doing that, you haven't changed any of the balancing that we did. And the same with the lock shield. We would then remove the fixed cap or the locking cap of the lock shield, pop on the adjusting cap, and you would then throttle it all the way down. And by doing that, it allows you to loosen off the nuts that hold the tail pieces to the lock shield and the valve body. And then the radiator can be lifted off of its bracket and leaned forward. Thanks for watching this training video. And if you need any more information or resources, head over to our website, DraytonControls.co.uk.